All right, take one. Let's hope we can do this all in one take. What's up, everybody? It's me, Narada, African Hair God, and I'm here to give you all that blowout demo that I have been waiting and excited to share with you all for the longest time. I just wanted to show you my client's hair prior to the blowout so you can see her, her texture and hair and everything. Um, I did cover how to detangle uh, long, thick hair in um, the previous members only video. So check that out if you haven't already. Um, I actually have a couple of detangling videos um, for any of the new channel or Patreon members that have just recently joined. So you can check that out for more detailed clarity on that. But I just included this clip just to kind of show and walk you through the whole process. So of course, before you do any blowout, you want to make sure the hair is hydrated. Uh, first off, you want to make sure the hair is cleansed really well, conditioned. Um, from there, you want to go and apply your um, either your your heat protectant. You want to go if you're going to use a leave in, you can use that. Whatever you decide to use, make sure you keep it very, very light um, and only apply enough so that it's able to coat all of the hair strands. You don't need an excessive amount of product. If you use an excessive amount of product, you end up um, harming your hair more than anything else. Um, it'll create more resistance when you go to detangle uh, or not detangle, but blow out the hair. It'll make it harder for you to blow out the hair and um, it'll actually make it harder for the hair to receive the heat and dry out reasonably in a reasonable time. So you'll end up putting more heat on the hair than was necessary to dry and stretch it out. So moderation is definitely key, whether it's loose natural hair, whether it's straight hair, whether it's blown out hair it's all the same less is always more okay um so again just make sure that you have enough product to coat the strands and that's it you you don't need an excessive amount so starting off with the first section here you see i am using the tension method i know my arm is completely blocking the hair strands but you will see in the next section um i do keep my blow dryer on high speed and high heat um i explained this before in an earlier video years ago but I do prefer to blow dry hair on this setting. Um, it allows me to have the greatest control on how much heat that I put on the hair, um, just from how close I hold the dryer to the hair and also like where I'm aiming it. So I'm able to dry her hair within a reasonable amount of time without putting an excessive amount of heat on it. Um, and yeah, you can see I'm just going through this section. I'll kind of explain in more detail on the next section, but you'll you'll see as many examples as we go through this video here. Um, starting from the ends and just working my way up to the roots. And really the roots can be the most trickiest part to get dry, especially if you have really, really thick hair, but you definitely want to make sure that you get not only the ends and mid strands dry, but the roots as well. Sometimes people like water will sit at their scalp and that water will allow their hair to revert and tangle up back again. So you want to make sure that you are very, very thorough and get all sides, all angles, all interiors of the hair and make sure that you dry out that hair completely. Okay. Um, so you all should know this by now, but I like to use a paddle brush um, to both detangle and to blow out hair. Um, in this video, I did decide to try, oh, I hate those Velcro um, capes. I, oh, I hate them. But um, I did decide to try to use a comb attachment um, later on in this video, and you'll see my experience and my results with that. But you can see just with her hair blown out, it's still very light, it's very airy. Um, and it's not weighed down with a bunch of product, okay? That's what you want um, for your blowout. It's gonna, like I said, make it easier and give you a much smoother and better result. So again, 
Starting off with the tension method, notice how I am directing the nozzle at an angle and directing the airflow down towards the ends of the hair instead of blowing directly into the hair. Does that make sense? You want to use the airflow to help smooth the cuticles of the hair or the, the shingles that lay on top of the surface of the hair in a smoothing motion. This is gonna give you a smoother um, blowout result and it's going to give you um, just a sleeker, shinier, smoother result for your blowout. Now I noticed I did have a lot of um, shit hair that got accumulated in the brush during the detangling process, which wasn't a lot actually. Um, so I'm just getting rid of that so that it doesn't snag and tangle hair as I work through blowing out the hair. That's another important thing to consider. Um, so I always start from the ends, loosen up the ends, dry and smooth out the ends first, then gradually work your way up to the roots. Then fo fo focus on the ends, then focus on the mid strands, get those smooth, and then go up to the roots. Um, this is the best way to go about detangling and getting the smoothest result with your blowout. Um, because you have to remember that whenever you are blowing out the hair, you are going to run your tool, your brush, your comb attachment, whatever it is that you're using through the ends more often than you are going to run your tool through the roots. So because with every pass, that tool is going to pass through the ends, you need to make sure that those ends are really, really thoroughly smoothed and um, detangled and dried out before you start working your way up. Okay. Uh, keeping the same routine here. As you can see, I'm moving through these sections pretty quick. She just has a lot of hair. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I did in fact um, apply all the heat protectants um, during the detangling process. Now, something that you'll notice here is that I will start to um, blow out the hair. And even though it looks like I'm getting through fairly smoothly, I know and I can sense feel that her hair is providing a lot of resistance to smoothing out and detangling. And it's actually uh, forcing me to put a bit more effort on her hair to get her hair smooth and dry. Um, because of this, you can see the ends just, it's not smoothing out properly. So because of this, I go and I take a spray bottle and I just gently mist a little bit of water throughout the section of hair. Um, the reason why I do this is because you don't want to over dry the hair. Um, you have to remember the hydrogen bonds that are in the hair. The hydrogen bonds give our hair its form and structure and it also sets our hair when it's completely dry. So when the hair prematurely dries out, either from just sitting too long or from um, prematurely drying out with the blow dryer, it kind of sets the hair in that shape. Almost like, um, think about it like when you do a twist out or something and you set the hair wet and then you allow it to dry, it maintains that twist out shape, that wavy definition. And then if you go and try to brush out the wavy definition without wetting it first, what happens? You can still kind of see the remnants of that form trying to hold in the hair and that's the hydrogen bonds. So you have to open it up a little bit. Um, and when, when I blow dry, I like to start the blow drying process on about, I would say anywhere between 50% and 75% um, dryness, uh, or I don't know how you would describe it. I want the hair to be about 50 to 75% dry before I start blow drying the hair. I don't want it to be complete, completely saturated uh, with water. I don't want it to be dripping with water. It's all about balance and it's all about key. If the hair is too, too wet, you'll find that you'll have to put more heat on the hair than necessary. If the hair is too, too dry, then you'll find that you'll end up over drying the hair and it'll dry out too quickly and you'll put more hair and make your hair more susceptible to heat damage. So it's all about a balancing act. You kind of want your hair to be about 75% dry or so. You want to be able to feel that moisture in the hair and that is what's going to allow the hair to stretch. Remember that our hair stretches 25 to actually 50 to 75% more when the hair is wet versus when it's dry. A lot of people say that your hair is weakest when it's, it's wet and in essence that's true. I do have a video explaining that. If you just go on my channel and look up um, 
hair weakest when wet or something like that. But it for natural hair, it's it's it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, so that's why I actually use water um, as I am blow drying when I find that the section prematurely dries out. And one thing you'll notice is when, when you go in after you wet the hair, if, if you ever do your blowout and you see yourself struggling through a section, just gently mist it with some water or some liquid based leave in and then proceed to go back in and try to blow out your hair. You'll find that it's so much easier to get through the hair and to smooth out the hair because you have just reopened up those hydrogen bonds and allow the hair to become more malleable and able to be more sculpted and formed. Does that make sense? So uh, everything is all about balance. Um, again, just going through, making sure that I not only get the surface of the section, but I also get the roots and I also get the interior and I also dry all sides of the hair. Um, it can be very challenging drying extremely thick hair. Um, sometimes there are pockets of um, areas within the hair near the scalp where water tends to reside and sit, as I said before. So I have to make sure that I'm very, very thorough in getting all of that moisture out because if you let that moisture sit in the hair, the hair will revert, okay? <laughs> it will revert. So you have to be thorough, but at the same time, it's all about balance and not putting too much heat on the hair, okay? And you also want to allow the heat to actually do the work and smooth out the hair. You don't want to run the nozzle and the brush through too, too quickly. And you also don't want the heat to just sit in one place. Okay, so here we are. We're at the top section now. I've been running my mouth for a long time. And this is where I decided to try out the comb attachment. Now, keep in mind, I usually don't use the comb attachment. The only reason I decided to do it today is because um, I remember I got a question from someone asking, you know, how do I blow out my hair at home? Like, can you do a video on that? And I'm like, I can't really show you that, but uh, I guess I'll try. So got the comb attachment here. And uh, I'm utilizing the same method I did with the paddle brush, just kind of using the tension method to help loosen out the ends of the hair and kind of give the hair a little bit of a premature stretch so that my detangling tool, my detangling brush is able to glide through more easily. Um, or in this case, the comb attachment, okay? So you can see I'm going through the hair and it might look like I'm going through really, really smoothly, but one thing that I know, see, look, I came across a tangle and I had to pull it out. One thing that I noticed about using this comb attachment is that um, it doesn't really, I found myself working harder um, to get the hair smooth, dried, and detangled. I found that I had to work and um, run the comb and the dryer through the hair more times than I did when I had to use the paddle brush. I also noticed that it was very, very awkward for me holding the dryer and trying to comb through it. And eventually I just kind of gave up trying to hold it at the nozzle, I mean, at the handle and just started gripping it at the nozzle, as you see me doing here. And that gave me a little bit more control, but um, it definitely forced me to put a bit more effort into combing through the hair then when I had my brush, it just, with, with the brush, I just felt like I had more control and I was able to just kind of glide the brush through the hair more seamlessly versus using this comb attachment. And um, one thing I noticed is that it was very harder, very much harder for me to get a smooth result with the comb attachment, probably because it's just blowing the hair all over the place. Um, and it just, I, I also noticed that with the comb attachment, it doesn't really open the hair up a lot. It just kind of rakes through the hair. And sometimes when you just like clumping the hair and raking through, it makes it harder for the heat to kind of pass through the strands and dry out the hair uh, from the surface through the interior and out. So it just, it, it just was, a, it just, I worked harder to just do it and look, it just, so many passes, I just, and then I know, I thought she was gonna turn back and look at me and say something because I know she felt me running this comb attachment through her hair and hitting them tangles. And when it would encounter a tangle, 
it's like because it, it just wants to rake through the strands it would try to go and rake through and when it would come across a tangle it would just pull at it instead of like separating it and breaking it apart um with the paddle brush the the way the bristles and the rows are extended you're able to open up the hair a bit more um, and spread the strands out. And we're doing that, it kind of like loosens and opens up the tangles so that you don't just pull at it. It actually loosens it up first. But the, the comb attachment, it doesn't really do that. Like, I just didn't like it. So I'm on this second section, sec oh, excuse me, this second section here. And um, this was the last section I decided to use with this comb attachment. Cause like, I just was like, no, this is not it. Like. I, just, I don't like this. Like, I don't feel comfortable using this. Like, look at all these passes. Like, with the brush, I would, like, that section would have been done. I literally split this whole section in half. This That section would have been done. It would have been smooth. And look, I still got to run through. Look, you see me look, trying to open up the tangles because the, the comb is just, like, ripping at it. Um, I felt like I was just giving her breakage. I felt like because I was running this nozzle, her hair directly on this nozzle with so many passes, I literally felt like I was like contributing to her acquiring heat damage. And it just wasn't a good feeling, you know? I, I just, I didn't like it. Now, I, I get it, you know, if you're at home and, you know, you're trying to bolt your hair yourself, you know, if you can't really get with it, the, you know, the situation with using a brush, or a paddle brush or whatever, and the comb attachment is easier for you, definitely use the comb attachment. Des definitely stick with it. I'm not telling you uh, what you can't use. I'm just telling you, for me, I, this ain't this ain't it for me. I, I will not ever in life be grabbing this comb attachment to blow out some hair again, because it just, I'm look how, much, look how much harder I'm working. Like, it's too much stress on my fucking body. Like, it's bad enough I gotta stay here and blow out all this hair, but on top of it, I gotta put all this arm strength just to get through the hair. Nah, son, nah. There's a better way. Work smarter, not harder. Okay. I must have passed through this hair like 80 times already and we're still going, we're still going. It's still not smooth, it's still not dry. And then on top of it, I, I feel like I'm just ranting about this comb attachment now. On top of it, I couldn't even get her roots dry the way I wanted to because it's not able to really pass through the roots like that without like singeing and frying her scalp. So like, I was like, no, where's my brush at? Cause I need to, I need to get back in here and I need to smooth out these roots. I need to make sure these roots are dry. So that's what you see me doing here. And now you see this brush is just smoothing out this hair the way it was supposed to with that comb attachment, but it just couldn't. It literally just couldn't. I think another reason why the brush works a little bit better is because you're able to give more tension to the hair and you're able to pull and stretch the hair as you dry it. With the comb attachment, you, you don't really get that same amount of tension and because of it, you don't get that same amount of smoothness. Um, so tension um, and smoothness plus heat equals a very smooth, sleek blowout. Like it, it all goes hand in hand, okay? Uh, and then I you see I also went back and got them roots on that other section I did with the, the comb attachment because I'm like, nah, mm -mm, it just, it ain't smoothing it out right. Like you see, it's all extra puffy and shit, like nah. So I had to go up in there and put even more heat on it. I just, I, mm -mm, baby, no, no, this ain't, this ain't what we do over here. Ooh, finally, 10 minutes later. All right, so we're on our last two sections. So it's not really much for me to say. Um, I pretty much said everything I need to say, but because we've been blow, oh, excuse me, because we've been blow drying her hair for about 20 minutes now, her hair is started to dry out. So I just went ahead and gently sprayed it with some water, um, just brushing through the ends a little bit just to loosen it up, um, and then going in with the concentrator, smoothing it out. And I, if I had to guess to me, I would say that her hair is um, somewhere, I would say her hair is high porosity. Um, Y'all know, I don't really like to play the porosity game too much, but you know, it's funny because I think a lot of people would kind of 
miscategorize their hair because their hair is so dense and thick that sometimes it takes a long time for thick hair to dry because literally the air cannot evaporate the moisture when it's like so much hair just compacted together. So the, the moisture just ends up sitting like at the roots and things. So the ends will be dry, but the roots will be completely moist and wet and full of water. Um, and a lot of people will be like, oh, well, that means I'm low porosity. No, it just means your hair is thick. You know, there's there's so many layers to peel back with hair and porosity and things that I don't even try to explain it to people on my channel anymore because I, I like, it, it's just, it's too, like, they're not able to really sit through all of my videos to really understand just how complex the concept of porosity in hair is. And then on top of it, people tend to make porosity too complex and put too much um, emphasis on porosity. Honestly, the only time porosity really matters is when you are doing a relaxer, hair color, bleach, or uh, permanent waving. Outside of that, the only thing it tells you is how quickly the hair is going to dry out, how quickly the hair is going to receive um, water, moisture, uh, product solutions. And um, that's pretty much it. Like, I don't really understand, like, why there's so much, you know, emphasis and classification regarding porosity when it's really not as you know, crucial to, to know your hair's porosity. All you really need to know is like, okay, my hair takes a long time to dry or my hair dries quickly. Like, that's it. Like, outside of that, I don't really trip on porosity like that because it's, it's no point. <laughs> if the hair is dry, moisturize it more often. If you don't have to moisturize it more often, then moisturize it, chill the fuck back and chill out for the rest of the week until you have to moisturize it again. It's, it's no like deep scientific method to the shit. Like it, it's literally common sense, but sometimes we make this shit so complex and hard to understand that it's kind of pointless. Anyways, this wasn't a rant on process. It's supposed to be on me detangling this hair. Um, so yes, like I said, keep the heat passing through the hair. Don't let heat sit on hair. That's where you create hot spots and create heat damage. Um, you want to move in a, at a reasonable steady pace, but not too, too fast and not too, too slow. Give the, the hair and the heat a chance to smooth out and stretch the hair, but don't like just have it sitting on the hair. Okay. Use that brush, apply tension or whatever method or tool that you decide to use. Um, when I used to blow out my hair, I actually started using a paddle, a paddle brush and um, I kind of got the hang of it, you know, for me. I would like position the brush through my hair and then like chase it with the, the blow dryer. But that might be too much for some people to do. So like I said, do, do what you need to do, do what works for you. And um, yeah, just do whatever it takes to get your hair smooth and straight without putting excessive heat on it. Okay. Um, and also this this front section of hers, I found that it's very, very, very resistant. So if she was to start graying, she'll probably start graying towards the front. Cause this section here, when I tell you it resists being smooth and stretched, it resists. So and I also noticed like her hair is a different color up there too. So it might be a different type of hair altogether. Who knows? All right, so just going through and just smoothing it out. Um, I think I'm trying to open up the hair and really hit those roots. All right, now I'm just going through smoothing out. Um, and that is pretty much it. I think at this point I'm hitting the hair with the cool shot just to kind of help set the hair, um, help give the hair a bit more shine, sleekness, and help uh, just keep it from reverting. I don't know how well this works, but they say it helps, so... I go ahead and do it just as a finishing touch. Honestly, I've done it before and I've seen people's hair revert. So it, it just all depends on your hair. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you, but you know, um, just because I'm trying to smooth out her hair um, and because it's like hot with all this heat blowing, <laughs> I, I just hit it with the cool, attack, the cool shot. Like just smoothing out that section though. All right, there we go. We are all done. This took about 30 minutes. Um, 
So she ended up asking for uh, two braids, just I guess to keep her hair smooth and neat um, for her maternity shoot. And uh, yeah, I just I just went in and started braiding. You know, I ain't putting no, a bunch of product, no jam, no nothing, because I didn't know what she was gonna do after the fact. I didn't know if she was gonna keep these braids in, if she was gonna take it out, rock a braid out. I, I didn't know like what direction she was gonna go. So I definitely didn't wanna like shellac a bunch of product in her hair just for the sake of two braids. I think she just wanted her hair out of the way, honestly. Her <laughs> being pregnant at all. Looking back on this, I wish I would have straightened out that braid a little bit more. It's a little zigzaggy in the front. Um, so that's just a little personal critique for my, myself. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And I think I went back in and yeah, I pinned it up, just rolled up the ends and pinned it up. Just gave her a nice little style to keep it out the way and off her neck and things. And that was that. This was the end result. Sorry, I didn't give y'all a 360. It's literally just two braids going to the back and getting pinned up. Like, that's it. Oh, look at my climb with her BB. I'm so excited for her. All right, that's it for everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, be blessed.